Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a new deck that I'm actually very excited to play with at FNM. This is probably going to be the funnest deck. Uh, the deck is around Gideon. So in standard, currently we have three Gideons. We all know Gideon of Trials, the new Amakai Gideon. We all know Gideon Allies Zendikar, the strongest card in standard ever since it's been printed. This card has dominated standard and it is your four drop that you want to see. And the newest planeswalker in this type of deck is Gideon Marshall Paragon. Where did this Gideon come from? It came from the introduction deck for Amaket. Interesting speculation? Maybe, probably not since there's lots of introduction decks. But you're going to run 12 Gideon in a more competitive deck, which I'll show you a little later. You might run 11 and the Marshall Paragon actually isn't that good it just serves as a Nelly Gideon. So Gideon of Trials makes it very difficult if not impossible to kill you. If you have a Gideon on the field they have to remove Gideon first and Gideon is very good at protecting himself. One of the strongest cards in standard right now is Heart of Kenrin. It costs two and Flying Vigilance and you can remove the loyalty counters to activate it. It's a 4-4. Four, four. That is a huge, huge body on it. So this is a more serious deck list. You have the Gideons of Trials, the Gideon Ally of Zendikar. You have, in this case, free Gideon March of Paragon. You could go up to 4. You have Fatal Push. You could, again, go up to 4 of those. For Hearth Scrutiny, this is creature removal. So you can, uh, you can remove... This is like the best discard that you have available to you in standard in terms of protecting your Gideons. Next we have Decoration in Stone, very good removal, cost 2 and takes care of most of what you need to take care of early on and your choice of board wipe which in this case is Fumigate. There are a few other choices but you do want a board wipe at, at 5. Next for artifacts you have Heart of Kinren Possibly the strongest card known. I mean, it's one of the strongest cards. Maybe you say Gideon's one and Heart of Kenrin is two, but when you put them together, really hard. Really hard to attack your Gideons. And then you have the Vessels. You have Free Oath of Gideon. Getting the extra loyalty is good, and getting the 1 1 to block with is also good. And one Anointed Procession. You also have some land. So let's talk about the new Gideon, because you wouldn't make this deck unless you had the new Gideon skill. So why why is his skill so useful? Is because you get an emblem, as long as you control a Gideon Planeswalker, any Gideon Planeswalker, you cannot lose the game and your opponent cannot win the game. You can go straight to the emblem and if you have Heart of Kinrin, you can protect this particular Gideon until you can play your more, more Gideons. And it is very difficult in today's standard to attack planeswalkers and especially Gideon. Uh, Gideon comes with a lot of loyalty and he has abilities to create creatures and he has abilities to manipulate combat to make sure that you are not going to take or your Gideon is not going to take too much damage. So Gideon of Trials, he is the main Gideon of this deck. Uh, he is the Warship Gideon where it is impossible to win the game or is impossible for your opponent to win the game and it's impossible for you to lose the game Eventually you would just win out with a timely fumigate So Gideon ally of Zendikar, I do want to go in detail about this card It is the strongest card in standard. It has been the strongest card in standard a Lot of people say oh, you know, I didn't buy smuggler's copter because I knew it would be banned Oh, I didn't buy Gideon because I think he's going to be banned. That is very foolish because if you didn't buy Smuggler's Copter, then you were not playing the Tier 1 deck at the time for months. If you did not buy Gideon's because you were afraid that he was too powerful and he eventually would be banned down the line, what deck have you been playing for in the last like year? Since I'll, you know, since then, Zend yeah, Zendikar was last year, last summer actually. So. You need to buy the top tier decks to do well. That is in my personal experience. If you don't bring your smugglers copters when they were legal, then everyone else will have smugglers copters and you will lose. If you don't have your Gideons, 
Everyone else has Gideon's, ally of Zendikar, and you will lose. So if you have the exact same deck and your deck doesn't have Gideon, you will lose against an opponent who has Gideon. I just wanted to make that small side note because a lot of people will say, oh, I know this card would be banned. I know they were going to ban you know, the Guardian. Okay, then what were you playing for the last few months? Like, you were getting blown out by the Guardian because it was so good it was banned. The same with Smuggler's Copter. It was so good they banned it, meaning it won a lot of games. So next, we talk about Gideon, Marshall Paragon. This is a Gideon I haven't really gone over that much because it is the introduction Gideon. Right now, what you need is you need a maximum amount of Gideons. I do believe that four copies is correct. Like, you just emblem it up and then you just throw Gideon. Gideon is a very, very difficult planeswalker to deal with, especially in standard. We're not in the Hero's Downfall instant speed on your turn. Okay, got him. This is a deck that if your opponents are unprepared to deal with, they're not going to be able to hit your Gideons. They won't be able to win the game, and your Heart of Kenrin will ease, easily eat them alive. That card is so strong in this type of deck where you just have Gideons running all over the place. And let's talk about it. So as crew-free, you're not going to crew it ever. You may remove, remove a loyalty counter from a Planeswalker you control rather than pay the crew cost. So you play out your Gideon, you make or you play this out, then you play out your Gideon, you make an emblem, you crew it, you attack with four, they're probably not going to block. This is essentially a 4-4 flying vigilance on turn three. And you have a Gideon on play, which already just made an emblem. Then when they try to attack you, you just remove another counter, and then you activate your heart again to block whatever is trying to attack you. Most likely, you're getting. That's insane. So people thought Gideon would be very good with Gideon. The Gideon of Trials would be very good with Gideon Allied Zendikar. No, this Gideon is even better with Heart and Kenrin. Like one of my favorite moves was Nissa, the free drop Nissa, not the five drop, which is not great. The free drop Nissa, and then play Heart Kenrin. Then free drop the Nissa, and then it's pretty much over at that point in time. Gideon is even better in that position because you have more Gideons running around, and they, they, I mean, it's so difficult to deal with this card. And then when you have so many Gideons making tokens and protecting themselves, and then you have board wipe, I mean, it is just OP. It's so good in this deck. Next, let's talk about a card that. I love, I've always liked the card Oath of Gideon. It has gone extremely well with Gideon Ally of Zendikar in the right decks. It gives you tokens and it gives you more loyalty, which is important for the heart of Kenrin. Overall, it's just so good. I mean, it, your opponent is already going to have trouble killing your Gideon. Now, let's give him some more loyalty, making it tougher, and let's also give him some tokens to just block. I love this turn play, Oath of Gideon into Gideon Ally of Zendikar, but I also like the play Gideon of Trials and then into Oath of, Oath of Gideon into Gideon of Trials. That's also equally very good because Gideon of Trials itself is a very good card. Like I don't believe it's as powerful as the Ally of Zendikar, but it's close, especially with the type of cards running around in this deck. Heart of Kenrin, Fumigate, the Decoration in Stone. Your removal is solid. Your, the removal in white in this deck is very solid. And it's difficult to get past that. You also have Fatal Puss in black. Now, one of the things you could do is you could throw Lily in here. The reason that, you know, you know I'm a big fan of Liliana... But the reason I wouldn't throw Lily in here because she's double black. And that is very difficult to deal with in a deck that wants to run pretty close to mono white. So Fumigate. So let's explain why Fumigate is probably the best board removal. You do have quite a bit of selection in both white and black. Black again, I would stay away because it's double black for most of the board wipe. Fumigate, destroy all creatures. You gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. The life gain is relevant. And you might be like, oh, well, why, why is it relevant? Your Gideon cannot lose the game. You need to establish this deck plays as a control deck. 
Yes, you can go aggro sometimes and you can tackle the heart of Tinrin, which is just very aggro, but there eventually becomes a point in time where your opponent is just going to give up. And that's the most, that's very rewarding because they will see that you they will not get past your Gideons. And just like Warship, right? It comes in point in time, if you played Warship, your opponent's going to be like, oh, well, I, I don't really have any win conditions. I don't have enchantment removal. And I don't have enough creature removal. Fumigate is very good. The life gain does matter because it will set you, um, it will allow you to protect your Gideons a little bit better and not make foolish trades. And talking about life gain, Shambling Vents is still one of my favorite lands. It is, in my opinion, the best man land of all 10 of them. So it's a two free white and black. Oh, so not all 10, all five. I wish all 10 was there. And as lifelink. Again, important because you need to stay alive until you can either board wipe, gaining more life, or you can establish control of the Gideons. Planeswalkers are very strong because if they are not answered very quickly, they just accumulate value and value and value until that value becomes so massive, you're it's like a control deck. Eventually, your Gideon will take over whichever Gideon you choose. Either making emblems, either making uh, tokens, or they're just going to win the game eventually. That's why you don't run creatures. I mean, your heart of Kenrin is a creature, but you don't have any way to activate it outside another Gideon. Either way, you can turn Gideon a creature and activate it, or you can just pay the loyalty, which is normally what you're going to do. This is the deck I'm going to take at f and I will update you. I do need to get Gideon of the Trials. I do not have those. And I do need to get Gideon, Marshall, Paragon. But everything else in this deck I have, it's not very expensive. The land base you should already have made. And if you purchased Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, when it first came out and was very expensive, I think you got the best utility of him because you've been playing him the entire time. And there's no better value than playing of the actual cards you own. So anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below if you're excited to play this deck or what you believe my record would be. Uh, I will try to film, but they play really crappy 90s music all the time, like Blink-182. Not that Blink-182 is really crappy. It's just like, it's not 1990s, dude. Anyway, bye, guys.